All right, so let's get today's video started. Should you buy or should you lease a Hellcat? Well, first, let's be a total car douche and open up a monster. Yes, it's orange because it matches my car. No, but that's not why I drink it. But anyways, okay, let's go talk about today's video. So should you lease or should you buy a Hellcat? Okay, obviously you guys know that I didn't lease my Hellcat. Is there anything wrong with leasing a Hellcat? Absolutely not. Um, I think right now, in certain states, you can lease a Hellcat for, I want to say, like, $5.99 or $6.99. I mean, prices where you would have to put down a significant amount to make your Hellcat payment, um, you know, that low, like $600 or $700. Bucks. So, I'm going to roll up the windows so a little nicer in here. But, um, so, if you guys care, I pay right at a thousand bucks a month for my Hellcat. Now, some of you guys might be like, holy shit, that's a lot of money, like a thousand dollars. Now, I would not suggest to anyone to go out and buy a $70,000 car if they couldn't afford it. My days of me being a jackass and spending money like it was going out of style, those days are over. So before we even bought the SRT Jeep Grand Cherokee, it's probably been two years now. Oh, yeah, actually, it's April. So, yeah, two years. So, two years ago, um, I made sure that I could pay for it no matter what happened. So, um, and our payment was a little higher. I think it was like 1100 on the Grand, on the Grand Cherokee. So, this Charger Hellcat is about 1000 bucks a month. Um, now, why didn't I lease it? Well, to be honest, because I wanted to end up doing stuff to this car, number one. Number two... I think this is a car that I would want to keep for a long time. Whether they make 50,000 Hellcats or whether they stop making them next year, this is a car that I really, really enjoy driving. And uh, I just think I would love to have it, you know, 20 or 30 years down the road. That's my original thinking. But that's how I am with cars. Like my Jeep Wrangler I own. Um, that I actually own because it's paid off. It's been paid off for like years, but um, I will never get rid of that. That was my first car that I bought brand new. I felt like a fucking boss. I was like, holy shit, I can actually like go out and buy a brand new car and I'll keep that forever. I'll never sell it. Number one, a little bit of nostalgia, but number two, it's a Jeep. They're cheap to fix. They last a long time and you don't have to worry about them getting a lot of problems. I mean, it, every car has their problems, but um, it's not anything usually major with Jeeps and they, their engines last forever. Um, anyways, so back to should you lease it or should you buy it? Well, I think it just depends on what you want to do. If you know that you're only going to keep the Hellcat for, I don't know, a few years, then I don't see the point in buying, you know, actually going out and buying uh, a Hellcat because you're going to lose money on it. As soon as you drive any car off the dealership, Maybe except the Demon or something kind of like that, like a 918 or a McLaren. Like, I, I don't think those cars count. Normal cars, because even a Hellcat is still like a normal car, you're going to depreciate as soon as you drive off the lot. So if you are going to sell it, like if you know, okay, I'm going to sell this in like a year, two years, three years, then yeah, I would lease it. There's no point. Now, obviously, you can't, you can, you could wrap it, you could do certain stuff. I mean, as long as you take the shit off, I guess. But I guess if I knew that I wasn't going to actually own it, I wouldn't put any money into it, which maybe that's a good thing. Um, but you could own a car that has 700 horsepower and you could go around racing and stuff. And then when your couple years of ownership is up, you just turn it back in or you could, you know, buy it and pay it off. So one good thing about leasing versus owning is your payments are going to be, I mean, you know, it's almost half of what mine is. So, I mean, that leasing is not a bad idea. And again, it really depends on what your goal is. If you don't know, then, you know, <laughs> I guess the first thing you need to figure out is, you know, can I, can you afford to A, buy the Hellcat or B, lease it? Um, 
you know, even if you just kept the Hellcat stock and just tinted the windows or something, I mean, it's still like a nice car. You don't need to add any extra horsepower or do anything crazy, but I would say, I don't know, 50%, maybe more of people who own Hellcats usually do something. Like, I took off the stripes, which that would have already voided the fucking uh, lease, so, or I'd have to put them back on. Um, let's see what else have I done. And I've done like little stuff here and there. So like everything that I've done, you could take off. But like once I put airbags on it or the front lip or I'm, where I'm drilling into the fucking front bumper, then yeah, you're going to start like voiding your lease. Um, and you know, to put on, I think the lease is like 10,000 or 12,000 miles a year. That's, that's a lot to put on on a Hellcat anyways. Most states that people own these, unless you're like where I'm at in Texas or in California, or Arizona, where you would literally, you could drive it every day versus being in New York or Detroit or somewhere on like the East Coast where they get, you know, shitty ass weather. I think, because I think that's part of the reason too, is those leases are usually up in that area because they know that people won't be able to drive it for a certain amount of months. Now, could you drive this in the snow? I mean, you could, I wouldn't fucking recommend it, but you could. Um, but it, again, it's really up to you as far as, you know, what you should do for me. I've never leased a vehicle, and to be honest, I probably won't ever lease a vehicle because I've never owned a vehicle that was stock. Like, literally, the first day I get a car, like, the next day I'll go get it the windows tinted. And then depending on what it is, like, like my Wrangler, I lifted it, put new tires on it, painted the bumpers, did a bunch of stupid shit. The truck <laughs> that we own, we fucking lie next to it, so you, that would obviously void your, uh, that would obviously, obviously void your lease. So again, it like really comes down to what you want to do with your car. If you like don't care, you're gonna keep it stocked, then yeah, I would lease it. There'd be no point to actually buy it. But if you're one of those guys who's probably like me, who's wants to do something to it, then yeah, I would, I would buy it. And we can stop the whole argument of, oh my God, you're leasing it so you don't actually own it and the bank, you, you don't actually, look, the only way you own your, own your car is if you go and pay in cash. But it, you would be an idiot because car loan rates are so low that it's almost like free money. I mean, if you can get a loan for 3%, I mean, literally 3% of 70,000, that's nothing. Like, nothing. And that's the difference between leasing and buying is you could buy a car and the loan is, the loan percentage is so small, it's like, well, why not? So, anybody who goes out and pays cash for a vehicle is stupid because you should use, <laughs> you should use your credit score, first of all, and you'd be able to do, say, say you were gonna put 20,000 down on a Hellcat. Well, what I would do is I'd put like three to five thousand down, so your payment is a little bit lower, and go invest or go put that fifteen thousand dollars to work. Go put it somewhere where it's going to grow and make money. That would make more sense to me, versus going out and just being like, "Well, I'm going to just go throw away twenty thousand dollars." Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, I don't hate on people who lease. I really don't give a shit. Like back when I was younger, I was like, "Why the fuck would you lease a car?" As I got older, like it makes sense. Um, like. My brother, for example, can't fucking keep a car for more than a year. But the problem with him is he he's like me. He wants to fix up his car and, like, all this other shit. So <laughs> he's always, like, selling his cars that he fixed up. And luckily he doesn't, like, come out too bad. But, I mean, people who want to, like, trade out cars every year, every two years, like their cell phones, those are the people who should do leases. I think those are perfect people. Or if you're like a businessman, you have to travel a lot. Yeah, I would get a lease because I wouldn't want to put miles on my actual car. So again, it really comes down to you know your preference and what you want to do. Again, for me, it's not my thing. But I don't have anything against it. it Maybe if I had a different job, or if I lived in a different city or something, or if I just didn't care and I wanted to just keep my car stock, yeah, then I would do shit to it. I'm not saying you can't do shit to it, but you just have to like reverse everything that you do and then every time you go into the dealership you know they're going to check your shit out so you know you can't tune it you can't put headers on it you can't do any of that shit because if you go to the dealership for an oil change i mean that's it but it would be nice to be like okay um i'm trading in my hellcat for the new hellcat 
because maybe it'll have more horsepower or maybe it'll look a little different. So you could always be with the freshest stuff, just kind of like phones. But again, it really comes down to what you think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you lease? Do you buy? What would you do if you had a choice? Um, and again, my payments are about $1,000 a month and people are like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. But it's all relevant. What is a lot to you might not be a lot to me. And what I think is a lot might not be a lot to somebody else. So it's just relevant. Just make sure you can pay your car note every month, whether you drive a Hyundai, whether you drive a Lamborghini, or whether you drive a Hellcat. Just make sure you can pay that payment. And you don't want to make your payment like 50% of what you make a month because that'd be fucking retarded. Like if my, if I was only making like two or three thousand dollars a month I sure as fuck would not be driving a Hellcat right now I'd be driving a fucking Hyundai like I used to so with that being said um, that'll be the end of today's video I'm filming a lot today for you guys uh, and I appreciate all the positive comments even the negative ones I don't even give a fuck but I appreciate all the positive comments you guys are awesome shout out to all my new subscribers and we will be having a 3,000 subscriber burnout video coming probably in the next two days uh, I'm going to be filming it today or tomorrow, and then I'll have that guys have that on the channel for you guys, because i got to burn some of this rubber off anyways, because uh, we got some new tires coming in. But let me know what you guys do. Did you buy your Hellcat? Are you leasing your Hellcat? What would you do? Would you lease it? Would you buy it? And uh, let me know why. So I will see you guys in the comments section. My name is Kevin Van Voorhis. Make sure you guys are following me on Snapchat, on Instagram, at Kev. I'm going to get my ass back to work. I'm out.